Ableton's been dropping a ton of super cool beta updates lately, one of which being a brand new revamped limiter. This new limiter has a new sound algorithm, so it's supposed to sound more transparent, and it's got a ton of new features. Today we're going to hop in and take a look at the new features of the limiter, and we're going to take a listen to it and see what we think about it. There's a ton of new beta devices coming out. If there's any other ones you want to see covered, let us know in the comments. Subscribe for more content. Let's get into the video. Throughout the years, Ableton's stock limiter has definitely received some criticism. Historically, it's been known for not being quite as transparent as one might like. Some of the key features of the updated limiter include a smoother release curve, making for less distortion, better metering with improved UI, the addition of mid-side routing, true peak, soft clip, and maximize modes. Before we get into the features of the updated limiter, let's briefly discuss what exactly a limiter does for those who might be unsure. A limiter prevents your audio from exceeding a set threshold, effectively controlling the peak levels of your track. One of its primary goals is to increase the signal's level without introducing unwanted distortion through clipping. To summarize, most of the time we're using this to increase the perceived loudness of an audio signal by making the quietest parts louder while preventing the peaks from clipping. The ceiling is going to be the maximum level that the limiter is going to output. The look ahead adjusts how quickly the limiter is going to respond to peaks. And the release time is how long it takes the limiting to stop after the signals drop below the ceiling. Then we have an option to crank the input gain. So this is going to be the amount of the signal going into the limiter. So these are our most common functions on any typical limiter. If we look at Ableton's current version of the limiter, we'll see pretty much just these controls. We have the input gain, the look ahead, the release, and the ceiling. Also this control, which allows us to limit our stereo signal or the left and right channels individually. So looking at the new updated limiter, right off the bat, you'll notice a refreshed interface. It's cleaner, more intuitive, and easier to navigate. The most notable function on the updated limiter is gonna be an improved envelope, which makes the limiter's release smoother, which is especially noticeable when longer release times are used. So this basically means this limiter is gonna act more transparently and has an overall better sound as the current limiter. Another one of the key updates is the improved look ahead feature. This allows the limiter to anticipate incoming peaks more effectively, resulting in smoother and more transparent limiting. You can adjust the look ahead time to suit your needs, whether you want a super fast response or a more gradual approach. For this example, I'm gonna use a transient heavy drum loop. Notice how it catches those peaks without introducing any distortion. Ableton has also significantly updated the metering and visualization in the new limiter. The updated meters give you a more accurate representation of your levels, making it easier to fine tune your limiting. Next, let's take a look at some of the new modes we have on our limiter. Standard, soft clip, and true peak. Standards are average limiter setting. The soft clipping option gently rounds off peaks instead of hard clipping them. This can add a little bit of warmth and prevent harsh distortion. See if you can listen and hear some of the colorization that's being added when we select soft clip. Next we have true peak. So this is going to prevent inner sample peaks or peaks between the samples. We have the same left and right channel limiting option that we've had in the previous limiter. However, in addition, we have a new mid-side routing option. The mid-side routing mode allows us to use the first channel of limiting for our monophonic portion of a signal and the second channel to limit the stereo signal or the side. This link control down here goes from zero to 100. And this is how much of the limiting effect we're blending between the two different channels. At zero, the channels are completely unlinked, whereas at 100, limiting is applying to both channels whenever either requires compression. The last feature we're going to take a look at on the new limiter is the maximize button. When we click this on, lowering the threshold will reduce the dynamic range and increase the loudness of a signal. And if we happen to be a fan of the previous limiting algorithm, we can always right click and select legacy smoothing. And now it's going to act with the same algorithm as the outgoing limiter. Overall, I'm super excited about this limiter. And personally, I think it has a very big audible difference. So I hope that was a pretty good comprehensive overview of the new limiter. Overall, I think it's a very big step up from the previous limiter. It sounds very good, and I'm personally very excited about it. Make sure to like this video and subscribe for more videos like it. We're going to be covering a lot more unreleased Ableton devices and features in the future. Thanks for watching. I'll see you next time.